shaft sinking. Anyone who wants to build an underground mine has to overcome major challenges. The construction of a shaft is a complex task and requires a lot of know-how and experience of all parties involved. Each shaft is unique and is tailored to the geological and hydrological conditions on site in order to ensure the safe operation of the mine for many decades to come. Machinery, equipment, plant construction, materials and personnel must be available at the right time, in the right quantity and in the required quality throughout the construction phase. To cope with gravity, groundwater and high or low rock strengths, reliable equipment and machinery and high quality materials are needed at all times, even in remote locations. The quality of the individual construction materials determines the final product. We comply with national and international norms and standards and, if necessary, also procure higher quality materials from abroad to meet our own quality requirements. This requires a partner with many years of experience in international shaft and underground construction, Redpath Dahlman. The new Oost Jaiwa mine is located in the Beresniki Solid Camps region, about 200 kilometers north of Pam, on the west side of the Urals. Production will be around 13 million tons of potash ore per year. The decisive factor for the cooperation with Red Park Dahlman is the innovative strength and decades of experience in sinking shafts and especially freeze shafts. As early as the 1920s, Dahlman Haniel sank the first freeze shafts in the Urals. As early as 2008, Dahlman Haniel was commissioned with the centre hole drilling of the shafts. The determination and evaluation of the geological and hydrogeological data and the design of the shafts according to Russian standards. The extracted core samples were examined in laboratories in Russia and Germany using state-of-the-art testing methods and, together with the geological and geotechnical surveys on site, served as the basis for the shaft design. A fundamental building block in the Red Path Dahman philosophy. Only what has been optimally thought out down to the last detail will subsequently fit together to form a high-quality whole that fully fulfills its respective purpose. FEM calculations and state-of-the-art programs were used to plan and calculate the shaft lining and all associated structures and equipment in order to ensure rapid construction progress during execution. In addition to the project planning, Redpath Dahman also carried out the complete approval procedure up to the approval by the Russian Mining Authority. In cooperation with our subsidiary, Dahlman Haniel Shatostroy in Beresniki, a large number of German and Russian designers and engineers ensured that all the necessary laws, standards and regulations were already taken into account in an optimum manner during the planning phase. Language barriers could thus also be avoided. Innovateness, reliability, accuracy, the careful use of resources, the safety of all those involved in the project, and adherence to the schedule. These are the qualities that are of the utmost importance to Red Path Dahlman in the implementation of any project. The future mine consists of two shafts. A hoisting shaft with two double skips, four stations, and a final depth of 467 meters, and a service shaft for man riding and material transport with three stations and a final depth of 411 meters. The sinking operations at the two free shafts were started with a temporal interval of one month in order to be able to deploy materials and personnel in an optimum manner at all times. In spring 2012, work began on site with the establishment of the construction site. In order to be able to construct buildings, foundations, roads and storage areas above ground, the site had to be cleared of approximately 3 meters of loose rock and topsoil. The extreme weather conditions with temperatures down to minus 45 degrees and meter high snow masses required special measures necessary. Temporary enclosures for the construction of foundations and several hundred meters of drainage ditches for the melting snow were constructed. Special conditions require special solutions. 
Due to the presence of groundwater in the water-bearing overburden strata, and in order to optimize the sinking time, the watertight foreshaft was constructed to a depth of approximately 45 meters using diaphragm walls. The construction of shafts under hydrogeologically difficult conditions, such as those found in the Permian region, requires a great deal of know-how, experience and appropriate technology. Varying rock strengths, groundwater-bearing rock strata down to a depth of 250 meters, and highly saline groundwater make shaft sinking there a particular challenge. Under such conditions, the only safe method frequently used is the freezing method. In the freeze shaft process, boreholes are drilled in a ring around the shaft and freeze pipes are inserted. The boreholes have to be drilled into the stable overburden. In the case of the Oost Chaiwa shafts, this meant 45 freeze pipes each with a length of 245 meters for both shafts, i.e. over 22,000 meters of boreholes and pipes that were drilled and installed over several months. Parallel to the drilling for the freezing pipes, the required refrigeration plant for the ground freezing was already constructed. Due to the extreme weather conditions, the necessary refrigeration machines, the pumping equipment and the piping system for the freezing circuit were assembled under the protection of a separate building. At temperatures as low as minus 36 degrees Celsius, the refrigerant calcium chloride is pumped via insulated pipelines in a closed system to the shafts where it is fed to the individual freezing pipes via a ring main. Several months pass before the freeze wall is formed in such a way that the shaft sinkers can sink the shaft and install concrete support under the protection of the frozen soil cylinder. Here too, further work was already started in parallel due to the tight schedule requirements. The use of the final head frames for shaft sinking saved considerable time and costs. Forward-looking planning and the unbroken will for continuous improvement also bring benefits for our client. The so-called foreshaft was excavated to a depth of 35 meters using conventional construction methods. For this purpose, loosening blasting was carried out and the loosened soil material was conveyed to the surface in buckets by a hydraulic excavator with a sinking hoist. The so-called dump chute is located in the head frame. By means of hydraulic cylinders, the bucket together with the guide construction is turned upside down and thus unloaded. After the construction of the four shafts, the working platforms are installed there. These working platforms are the miner's workplace for sinking the shafts. On several working decks, the necessary work such as the installation of concrete and reinforcement installation of cast iron tubings, extension of the supply lines, surveying and loosening and loading of the blasted muck must be carried out there. When constructing free shafts using conventional methods, blast holes are drilled by means of pneumatic drilling equipment or by a shaft drill jumbo. These holes are then filled with safety explosives and detonated. After the blast fumes have been ventilated, loading of the muck can begin. Depending on the conditions, pneumatic or hydraulic loading equipment is used to load the tailings into the sinking bucket and then convey them to the surface. Parallel to the construction of the excavation, the shaft walls are secured against rockfall with rock bolts, wire mesh and subsequently a concrete lining. Together with the freeze wall, this combination provides protection for the miners against the high pressures from geology and groundwater. The miner's greatest enemy, especially in a potash and salt mine, is water. Penetrating groundwater and strata water dissolve the salt and endanger the deposit. Therefore, when constructing the shafts, it is extremely important to prevent the inflow of water from the water-bearing rock strata. Local requirements and peculiarities, the customer's wishes, experience and traditions, as well as recognized and proven calculation methods, determine the design of the shaft lining. In the CIS countries, cast iron tubing lining is still frequently required, while in many other countries, the final shaft lining and water-bearing rock is preferred by means of a composite lining consisting of an external, tightly welded steel plate cylinder with prelaid concrete.
In the case of tubing segments lining, tightness is achieved by means of lead seals in the joints between the tubing segments. In the case of composite lining, a welded steel cylinder seals the shaft completely against the groundwater. Both options were presented to the customer and the advantages and disadvantages of the different concepts were explained. As the tubing lining is preferred in Russia, the customer ultimately decided in favour of this option. To support the vertical dead loads of the tubing segment lining, massive ring foundations are installed at the base. These foundations transfer the loads into the rock and also contain various sealing systems to prevent the vertical passage of water behind the lining. In the so-called wedge ring, sealing is achieved by arranging a solid ring of cast iron in conjunction with a packing layer of wooden wedges between the outside of the wedge ring and the rock mass. In addition, chemical seals are arranged above the wedge ring. By combining established systems with innovative, high-quality building materials, we can ensure the durability of the structure. Due to the worldwide experience of the Red Path Group, the latest and best materials are always used. Shafts are the access to the deposit. They ensure that the extracted ore reaches the surface and that the miners, the material and the required quantities of fresh air enter the mine. In order to be able to move appropriate conveyances safely and at high speed in the shaft, the shaft internals are installed after shaft construction. Loading and unloading equipment, as well as horizontal and vertical girders made of galvanized steel, are installed in even sections, aligned and permanently fixed. Red Path Darman is at your disposal from the planning stage to the handover of the fully installed shaft system. Our customers rely on our experience, our know-how, our reliability and on our high standards of occupational safety. Red Path Dialman, your partner for shaft sinking worldwide.